Howdy and welcome guys to episode 16 of the 240SX 2JZ swap. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally making some headway on this project. Behind me, the engine is on the ground and ready for a very special component, the transmission. So today we're going to be installing a brand new T56 Magnum transmission from Granis Racing, and I'm going to walk you through that process. So let's get going with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this old pilot bearing that I put in for the R154 transmission because we have this brand new pilot bearing that we are installing for the T56 transmission. So how are we gonna get this one out? We're gonna use some bread and an old uh, clutch alignment tool to get it out and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so this is a very delicate process. You're gonna take a piece of bread and you're gonna stuff it into the hole don't worry, I've done this before. I am a professional. So you're just gonna smush as much of this in there as you possibly can until you can't fit any more bread in that hole. I'm using white bread. Uh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite kind of bread. All right, so it looks like I can't really fit any more in. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take our clutch alignment tool. We're gonna kinda use that to pack it in there. There we go, now we got some more room. And then we're gonna keep repeating this process until we can't put any more bread into that hole because then we're gonna start hitting the clutch alignment tool with a hammer. And the goal here is that eventually behind the pilot bearing is gonna be filled so much with bread that it's gonna push the pilot bearing out. Hit it with a hammer and the bearing is gonna start coming out. There it comes. Fill it up a little bit more with bread. There it is, exactly one piece of bread to get your pilot bearing out. There it is, boys and girls, the bread method. And now you can just scoop all that extra bread out. Look at it, it's like cement in there almost, except edible, edible cement. So with the old bearing out, it is time to install our brand new bearing. So this is the one that we're gonna be installing. And I found a socket that goes around the outer ring of the bearing there as you can see it kind of it just fits perfectly on that outer ring you do not want to have a socket that is going to be um hammering against the the race right here because that would damage the bearing and you're going to have problems so make sure that they are the same exact size and then we're just going to be hammering that right into its spot there on the crankshaft so i've got my got my hammer here and we're just going to go to town There it is, going in nice and smoothly. Make sure it still spins nice after you're tapping it in and I'm just gonna give it a couple more taps, make sure it's nice and seated. So you can't push the bearing in too far. There's an inner lip inside the crankshaft slot where the uh, bearing goes. So you just tap it in until uh, you, you feel like it's seated. So this one certainly is, gave it a few extra taps. It spins nice and freely and that is your new pilot bearing installed. All right, it's time to install our flywheel. So we have our ARP flywheel bolts with red Loctite applied to them already. Here's our flywheel. It's not a lightweight flywheel, um, actually, because uh, from the guy at Granis Racing, Joel Granis, he actually recommended you use just a normal flywheel because if you're gonna be daily driving your car, um, the lightweight flywheel is gonna make things a little too jerky for you. It's great for if you wanted to drift and, and do some uh, track racing or autocross, but if you're daily driving your car, you're gonna want just a regular uh, heavy old flywheel. So that is what we have here. And I've cleaned up our surface on the crank ready uh, for the flywheel to be installed. So I am going to get the flywheel on and then torque the bolts with the red Loctite on them to 75 foot pounds. All right, it's time to install our clutch. This is a Mickeloid uh, Stage 4 2JZ clutch. I think they call it like the Street Supreme or something like that. It's just a single disc, um, but I think it is rated to 625 um, pound-feet of torque. The first thing we're gonna do before we install the clutch is clean up the flywheel. So we're just gonna use some brake clean, clean that up. And then we're also going to do the same uh, treatment with the, uh, the brake clean to the pressure plate uh, surface. So let's get started cleaning this up here.
Well, it didn't like the microfiber too much. It left the fibers from the microfiber, so that's not great. We're gonna have to get rid of those. All right, so I think we successfully cleaned the mating surface. It is looking pretty decent. So now the next step is to take our clutch and our clutch alignment tool here. And you can see on the clutch, this one in particular has a protruded side and a flat side. And for this particular clutch, the flat side goes against the flywheel. So all you do is you slip your clutch alignment tool right through the clutch there, right into your pilot bearing as far as it'll go. And you just push it up against there. And there you go. Boom, clutch installed. Just kidding. We still need to put the pressure plate on. So let, let's uh, get to doing that now. Yeah, this is gonna be covered up unfortunately, but So what we're doing here is just putting in the pressure plate bolts. I put some red Loctite on them. And uh, these guys go to 16 foot pounds as per the instructions uh, with this clutch. So I'm just putting them in by hand and then we'll torque them, torque them right on down. All right guys, so now that our clutch is installed, it is time to install our bell housing onto the engine. And then after that, we're gonna be taking some measurements so that we can adjust and shim our hydraulic throughout bearing on the Tremec transmission. So let's get started installing this thing. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but Granis Racing, this whole uh, kit for the T56 to the 2JZ is from Granis Racing. So big uh, thanks to him for setting me all up with this um, because his parts are just really high quality, really good stuff. So let's get this bell housing installed. Line it up on the dowels. Should be, should be that easy. And then you're gonna take his supplied hardware. He, he gives this uh, to you in the kit. You're just going to uh, pop it in and, and tighten it all down. And I believe he, he torques these to about 50 uh, to 60 foot pounds. So that is what I'm going to um, torque all of these bolts down to that he gives you in the kit. So as you're torquing down your bell housing, you're gonna install your starter at this point. So it just goes into this little uh, slot, this little hole at the back of the block here. It just sits right in there. And then you're gonna take some bolts that were supplied with the kit as well. And they go through the bell housing and they thread right into your starter. So I'm gonna start those. Grab my other bolt. Goes through the bottom hole here. So the starter's just held on with two bolts. But that is how you uh, install your starter. It's as simple as that. A little bit more difficult when it's in the car though and you have absolutely no room to take it out and put it back in. All right guys, so the next thing that you're gonna do to install the T56 is you're gonna have to take some measurements for your hydraulic throw out bearing. And the first measurement we're gonna take is from the mating surface of the bell housing here. So we have a straight edge running across that surface. And then you're going to take a measurement from that surface to the clutch fingers right in here on the uh, pressure plate. So I'm gonna be using the probe function on my uh, veneers here, and I'm just gonna be going from the straight edge and then just pushing it back until it makes a connection with the clutch fingers. There we go. And then just make note of that measurement. So I have 88.65 millimeters, and we're gonna do it one more time just to uh, double check ourselves. 88.22 millimeters, so we're within a millimeter. So we're gonna be taking the average of those two, and that is going to be our measurement for uh, that, that measurement right there. All right, so now we're gonna install our hydraulic throwout bearing, which is right here. And the measurement we were taking before, which was from the bell housing face to the pressure plate fingers, were so that we can gauge the distance and correctly set our air gap between the hydraulic throwout bearing, which, go, which is right here, it'll sit right here in the transmission, and our pressure plate fingers. So we're gonna want about a three millimeter gap or about an eighth of an inch between the bearing and the fingers on the pressure plate. And that's so that when the pressure plate or the clutch kind of wear in and, and bed in, 
um, will have a gap so that when the fingers start to kind of come outwards as it wears down, there will be a little bit of a gap there that this uh, bearing actually can, it can account for that, that wear. It actually is kind of self-adjusting. So we're gonna need a three millimeter gap, like I said. So the measurement we're gonna take here is from this bearing face to this face right here on the transmission. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the measurement that we took over there, which we got 87.2 millimeters from that face of the bell housing to the fingers, and we're gonna subtract 3.2 millimeters, which is about an eighth of an inch from that measurement. So, and that is what we're gonna want to set up our bearing uh, to from the face of the bearing to this face on the transmission. So that is what I'm gonna do now, starting with installing our hydraulic throw up bearing, which starts with this uh, guy right here. This is just the housing for the, uh, for the bearing. So this just slides right on the input shaft there. I'm gonna torque the uh, two bolts, two supplied bolts down to 16 foot pounds with some thread locker, and then we'll get to shimming our throw out bearing. All right, so our housing for our throw out bearing is installed, and now it's time to install the throw out bearing itself, or at least the piston section of the throw out bearing. So this should be pretty easy where it just threads right on to its little housing here. So the way we adjust our throw up bearing is super simple. That housing that we just installed is threaded and so is the, um, there are some internal threads on the piston uh, assembly of the throw up bearing right here. So you can literally just thread this on further towards the transmission or back it out, depending on what you want your gap to be set at for your pressure plate fingers there. So I'm gonna take some preliminary measurements. I'm just gonna thread it on a little bit here. Try not to knock everything out of the way, get these there's uh, hoses there. And we're gonna run a straight edge across the bearing face and then we're gonna take a measurement to the transmission face right there. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so the first measurement I took, I got 89 millimeters and that's probably um, kind of a rough estimate, but that's all we need right now. So we're gonna spin this further onto the transmission there to get to where we need to be. We just got 85 millimeters and we're looking for 84.05. So we just got a little bit more to go. All right, so the hydraulic throw up bearing is finally shimmed. I took a lot of time measuring to make sure that the measurement was correct because it is kind of hard to get the straight edge to lay flat on that bearing surface. But it looks like, fingers crossed, we are good on that uh, as far as shimming goes. So now what you have to do for this specific throw up bearing is take this little Allen head bolt and it goes through this little ear on the hydraulic throw up bearing piston assembly through to the housing. So that gets torqued to 16 foot pounds with some red Loctite. So I'm gonna do that now. And then after that, our hydraulic throw up bearing is installed and we can get to making one modification on the T56 and then we can throw the T56 on the engine. So let's get that started. All right, so the only modification we have to make to the T56 is on this breather tube right here. So this is a vent for the transmission for all that built up pressure. And there's a little O-ring in this cap here in this little breather outlet. And we're gonna wanna get rid of that little O-ring. So all I have to do is take this whole mechanism out of the, um, the tube that it's in. And then we're gonna put this in a vise to get the cap off to remove the cap from this, uh, this I guess this little stem here, and then we'll remove the O-ring, put it all back together, pop it back on the tube, and we should be good to go. So let me try to get this out. All right, there we go. All right, so I've got the cap off and there is, if you can see, it's this black bit right there. That's the O-ring that we're trying to get out. So see if I can't fish it out here. There we go. So there it is. So here's the spring. Here's that stupid O-ring. We're gonna toss that to the side. We don't need it anymore. Put the spring back in there. And then we are. I'm just gonna reassemble that whole mechanism and pop this back on the transmission, and that is the only thing you need to do to the T56 before you can install it in the car. All right, 
so the T56 is finally installed on the 2JZ. I could not be more excited about that because the next step is getting this thing installed in the car. And it's funny because I've already installed the engine into the car once before, uh, about a year and a half ago, but I'm just as excited to do it all over again. And finally, fingers crossed, get this thing ready to drive. It has been such a long project getting this to where it is today and so many hurdles and headaches and challenges to jump through. So I, I it feels like we're almost in the home stretch to get this thing, um, you know, just driving up and down my driveway uh, would, would be just awesome uh, to do in the next couple of months. So that's, that's the goal. That's where we're, we're aiming um, to get to. And the next video I put out will be getting this thing all situated into the 240SX. So stay tuned. Thanks for, uh, for listening and have a great, have a great day.